We are currently located 1.6 miles away on Green Street, not handicapped accessible, and just too far away for the families. Our new location for you golfers is about a seven iron away, straight that way, or 150 yards if you don't play golf. We are so excited to have so many supporters, vendors, board members, and the media here to help us celebrate this momentous occasion. To kick off this celebration, I would like to introduce a man who has been a huge supporter of the house. In the beginning, he and his wife Cindy agreed to be our honorary campaign co-chairs. He was instrumental in us getting this property with an unprecedented 60-year lease with the Board of Regents. In June, he also allowed us to have payroll deduction with the hospital side of GR Medical. And for all of you that are here that supported that campaign, can we give them a round of applause? Thank you for stepping up. Please give a warm welcome to the president of GRU and the CEO of GR Health Systems, Dr. Ricardo Aziz. Good morning. Good morning. These, are, these are the kinds of days that I really like to preside over, other than things like budget and money and things like that. Welcome to our campus, to the GRU Health Sciences campus, soon to be home of the new Ronald McDonald House Charities in Augusta. Revered South African leader Nelson Mandela said, there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. Perhaps even more revealing is the community that treats its six children and the families who love them. By that measure, the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Augusta and the Children's Hospital of Georgia reveal that this community is a generous one, a kind-hearted one, skilled and compassionate. For 28 years, families of children with critical illnesses have relied on the Ronald McDonald House to take care of their routine needs, like where to eat, where to sleep, while they seek medical treatment, many times right here in our hospital. For longer than that, children from all corners of Georgia and South Carolina have been making the Children's Hospital of Georgia our institution a world-class pediatric institution. Like our pediatric and neonatal intensive care units, our pediatric emergency tertiary care center, and our hematology oncology unit for children with cancer and blood disorders. Many of these facilities are the only ones available in the region. And for years, thousands of children and their families have found what they are looking for right here in Augusta. Today, as we break ground in a new facility just 150 yards away from the Children's Hospital of Georgia, we begin a new partnership that will allow us to serve even more families from all around Georgia, South Carolina, and beyond. And we can then provide them newer and better family services as, as they care for their children to help them ease their stress, their discomfort, the pain of caring for a sick child. We at Georgia Regents University welcome our new neighbor. We look forward to partnering with you as you provide critical care to the families of our patients and our children. With this partnership, we demonstrate that we can do great things and that we are doing great things in Augusta and at Georgia Regents University. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And thank you for your future support, because we will need lots of it as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aziz, uh, for your leadership in this community. Next up is a man for the past seven and a half years that has shown a passion and vision for this city unlike uh, any mayor before. Just last week, uh, I attended the Georgia Ford Conference where Deke was praised uh, for his leadership and passing the T helping pass the T-SPLOST 
uh, in, here in this region. He also has been a huge supporter of the House. If you've seen NBC, you saw a recent Because of You campaign. Well, Deke said that if he ever runs again, he'll be using his picture for his campaign. Give me a warm welcome in introducing the mayor of our great city, Deke Copenhagen. Sean, and just to share with you what a great cause I think this is. I grew up deathly af afraid of clowns, and I still am. So any campaign that could get me to put a red nose on, it's got to be very special. But, but it's an honor and a privilege to bring you greetings on behalf of the city today as we celebrate this historic day for our city and for the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Augusta. This has been a long time coming. It's been a long time dream. Bets and I were talking about the first time we discussed it was in 2007 together. But I will share with you, because it says I'm supposed to speak about the future of Augusta, it is so amazing to me what this community, this city can do when we work together towards a higher cause. I've seen it in the Croc Center, in the Fisher House, here in the Ronald McDonald House, we live in an amazing community, and our future is extraordinarily bright. We are a destination on so many levels, but one of my goals has always been to focus on being a destination for healing with the medical infrastructure that we have here, and we definitely are that. This will be just one more asset to contribute to that reputation, both regionally and nationally. So this is a great day for the city of Augusta and to the board and staff of the Ronald McDonald House, I'd just like to say thank you for the great work that you do on a daily basis, not just to benefit citizens in Augusta, but to benefit citizens throughout the Southeast, throughout this region, and to all the donors in particular. I just want to say thank you for making today possible. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Dean. Dr. Bernie Maria has a vast knowledge of Children's Hospital working with Ronald McDonald Houses all across the country. He stepped up to support our new house with a room. He has also given inspirational speeches at our host parties. Please welcome the pediatrician in chief for Children's Hospital of Georgia, Dr. Bernie Maria. Well, thank you for coming this morning and for celebrating with us uh, what we think is a very important milestone uh, for children in our state and our region. Uh, it was over a hundred years ago, right here, that Grace Shaw Duff, whose portrait is on the wall across our lobby, knew what she wanted for children and families. She wanted to support the nurses and women of the Children's Hospital Association who were running an orphanage in our parking deck and who wanted to build a children's hospital. She gave the money for that children's hospital and she named it for her husband, William, her father, Henry Wheeler Shaw, and her son, Bradford, the Will and Ford hospital for children. Her dad, Henry Wheeler Shaw, was a famous author in the 19th century. He had the pen name Josh Billings. He and Mark Twain were the two most famous humorists of the 19th century. So it should come as no surprise, knowing what Gray Shaw Duff saw for us and wanted for children, that one of his quotes was, a woman's influence is powerful, especially when she wants something. <laughs> the late Pat Sadamka, who many of you knew, who passed only three years ago, and who saw our new children's hospital open its doors in 1998, was a passionate advocate for patient and family-centered care. We stand here today honoring Grace Shaw Duff, Pat Sadamka, 
at the groundbreaking of a new Ronald McDonald House within just a short walk of the Children's Hospital of Georgia. We are the Children's Hospital of Georgia because we are the Children's Hospital for Georgia. Last year, we cared for children from virtually every one of the 159 counties in this state. 70% of the thousands of families that have been served at the Ronald McDonald House were from South Georgia, small towns that absolutely freeze up when one of their own is ill, when one of their children is hospitalized, and one of their children is hospitalized at a distance from their own community. Just think about your own children and grandchildren and what happens when they get sick. Everything stops. Stasis in the family. Well now, the Ronald McDonald House is coming home. It's coming home to the Children's Hospital of Georgia and to the Georgia Regents University campus to offer families a bit of tranquility, hope, and rest. To bring them a sense of community before they return to their own community. We should all rejoice that the house is coming home and that we're being true, all of us in this room, and the community at large to the long-standing vision of serving children in Georgia, Georgia's families uh, and communities, including our very own in Augusta. In closing, uh, let me leave you with another uh, Josh Billings quote. For all the families uh, that have traveled here and will travel here and uh, see their children return to health, and return to their community. He said, quote, to bring a child up in the way he should go, travel that way yourself for a while. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maria. Dr. Howell shows as much passion and determination as anyone to see our new house built. This place has truly been his home for over 40 years. We're lucky to have him and his wife Debbie as our campaign co-chairs. Under his guidance, with the payroll deduction and the medical community, we've helped raise over $225,000 for the house. I want to say thank you to Wes, Becca, and Susan Barkis as well on that. Please give a warm welcome to Surgeon in Chief, Dr. Charlie Howe. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I made a few notes because I didn't want to leave anything out. It's, the only problem is that all my notes have already been said. So I, I guess I might start over or something. Um, in 1982, I finished my pediatric surgery training in Philadelphia at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia under the late C. Everett Coop. Remember the Surgeon General that had the goatee? It looked like he was Amish. Um, I never really considered, you know, going anywhere else except here. So I came back to Augusta to the Medical College of Georgia. I thought then, and I still do, that I could make a difference for children in Georgia and South Carolina. On the ground floor of the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is one of the busiest McDonald's in the United States. I have never forgotten all the children that I saw going to McDonald's as soon as they were able to eat after a major procedure or after a diagnostic test. Shortly after coming back to Augusta, we started a campaign to build a children's hospital here at the Medical College. Little did I know that it would take until 1998, 16 years, to make it happen. Now a lot of people were responsible for that. Bobby Dwelly from down in Millen, 
the late Tom Murphy, Speaker of the House, Governor Zell Miller, and Dr. Fran Tedesco, a former president and a great president. And on the ground floor of our children's hospital is McDonald's, right there. Well, now some people don't like McDonald's. They say we get too fat. Well, we have to have some reason to exercise, right? <laughs> now, children love McDonald's. When I pull out their NG tube and tell them that in six or eight hours they can eat, the first thing they say to their family is, can I go to McDonald's? Well, they all come to McDonald's. They don't really like necessarily our breakfast upstairs. They like breakfast at McDonald's. We care for children from all over Georgia. And nothing could be better than the marriage of our children's hospital, McDonald's, and the Ronald McDonald House charities. We have a great Ronald McDonald House on Green Street. Many of my patients and families have stayed there over the past 29 years. Many of our friends here today have been very instrumental in getting that house and helping to maintain it. However, for many years we've been trying to move it closer to no avail. We want it to be on campus to no avail. Finally, under the leadership of Mr. Hefner and Dr. Aziz, our Ronald McDonald House will be on campus. That's fantastic. It was a natural for my wife and I to be co-campaign chairs with the Boardmans. The Howells and the Boardmans have a vested interest in this community and this state. And we have worked very hard to help make this a success. Further, I must say that I really enjoyed talking to many of you today about contributing to our success. This hospital, pediatric surgery, our wonderful children's operating rooms, children's surgeons, and children's anesthesiologists, the PICU, the NICU, the hematology oncology unit, all take care of sick kids. Sick kids are what we're all about. Not just infants, but all kids. Many with various forms of cancer that are managed by our oncologists and by our surgeons. To partner Ronald McDonald House Charities and the Children's Hospital of Georgia, these two great organizations is unbelievable. And to have the new Ronald McDonald House so close is even better. Many mothers with an unborn child travel long distances across the state to come to our facilities, to see our maternal fetal medicine specialist, to get a second consultation on what could be wrong with their baby. Many of these don't have a lot of money. If you think about it, unfortunately, most kids that have a severe congenital anomaly that needs for us to repair it, families are having a hard time. So for them to come all the way to Augusta and for me to be able to tell them, you can stay in our Ronald McDonald house overnight, walk over to the hospital, have your test, have your evaluations, talk with us about the surgery, and travel back home. And then when it's time for you to deliver, you can deliver in our hospital system on the seventh floor. Your baby can go down to the sixth floor to the neonatal ICU. From there they travel down to the third floor to the children's operating rooms. There they have their corrective procedure. Now mom may go home in a day or two from her delivery, maybe five or six days if she has a C-section, but she's still under the same roof, her baby and her. Now where does she go? To a motel, to a friend's house down the street, I mean, they're from Lakeland, Georgia. They don't have friends here. They're from Leesburg. They have even fewer friends here, because I'm from Lakeland. <laughs> I travel to Albany once a month, and I see moms like I'm talking about, who need to come to Augusta for an evaluation and to have their baby here and have us fix it. It will give me a lot more pleasure now to tell them that our Ronald McDonald House is just out the front door, not trying to describe to them how to get from Albany to Green Street. That's a tough one, I can tell you. It is hard to describe how important all of this is. I mean, if you've noticed, I've 
kind of hesitated talking several times because this is a very emotional thing for me, and I can't help it. I mean, I'm a surgeon. I operate on kids every day. That doesn't bother me. This bothers me. To many of you, I say thank you in making this dream come true. A Ronald McDonald House on campus. To those of you who are interested in helping, but who have not committed, I can't believe it. <laughs> but I urge you to help us, help our little patients. Those that are born, and those yet to be born. And help their moms and dads to have a place they can temporarily call home. We are almost there in accomplishing the financial obligations that accompany this huge project. But we still need a little bit more. We need your help. I too, just like Dr. Maria and many of our faculty, have dedicated a room. Not sure, I'm who, not sure who I'm going to name it after right now, but that will be good times as well. So I encourage all of you to help us as much as you can. And thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Howe. Tori and Bray Boardman have been the heartbeat of our campaign efforts. Their guidance and community support has helped us tremendously with our grants and our donors in the community. We are very lucky to have them as co-campaign chairs. Please help me welcome Bray Boardman. Thank you all very much. Um, I was running a little late getting here and um, couldn't find a parking place. Um, and I was reminded again that I drive a, drive a big truck and it wouldn't fit in the garage, so I am parked over here in the employee lot. And since um, Dr. Aziz is here, I'd like to formally request a residential park, please. It's a black truck. <laughs> um, thank you all very much for being here. The support and the, the number of people is just overwhelming, uh, I think, to all of us. Um, my wife, uh, Tori, who is on the board, was an instigator and got me involved in this project. Before, before she joined the board, I knew very little about the Ronald McDonald House, um, to be honest. But through her personal devotion to this project and um, some friends of ours who experienced a similar house uh, in another community and how much it meant to their family and allowed them to heal as a family, I got on board. Um, we, along with the house, um, we're going to make this, this place happen. Let me tell you a little about the house, um, and I don't think I'm stealing by else's thunder because I hadn't mentioned it, but um, it, the, the location is the biggest thing. We've, everybody who's gotten up here has talked about that. Um, when you have a critically sick child, the difference between 1.6 miles and a 50 second walk to go check on your child or to be back with your family is enormous. Um, the importance of that in the healing process, um, I don't know how the doctors feel, but I think the importance of that cannot be overstated. This location is right behind us. This house will be 28,000 square feet with 23 bedrooms, more than double what we currently have, two of which are immune suppression rooms. Each bedroom will have its own bathroom, and you can imagine um, preserving your dignity when you have your own bathroom versus walking down the hall. Um, community kitchen, uh, family kitchen, uh, community room, uh, things that, that we're uh, lacking right now in the current house. So what's been done to date to get us to this point, um, to get us to this groundbreaking, groundbreaking? A lot's been done. I'm so impressed and humbled by what the community has done and what staff has done really behind the scenes. A lot of this has gone on behind the scenes for the last six months to a year. It's happened through one-on-one -on -one meetings with people. Many of y'all are in here right now. It's, it's happened through receptions at people's homes in Columbia, Columbia County. Richmond County, Aiken County. It's been dinners at restaurants. It's been civic club talks. Restaurant owners who have agreed to contribute a portion of their proceeds to the house. The medical community. Um, it's been said what GRU has, has done and Dr. Aziz um, is huge, but I, I also need to point out the private practice, the medical community has stepped up to the plate for this project like the medical community has never done in this community. I'm so proud of that. 
race car driver. You've got pamphlets in your seat, a race car driver who's helping raise funds through pledges for each successful laps that he completes in competition. A pro golfer who's doing the same by helping raise funds through each birdie he scores in his tournaments. Local and state foundations have already come to the table and pledged uh, for this campaign. Real estate developers, bankers have come to the table and cannot stop without mentioning the local Ronald McDonald franchisees and how they've come to the table in such a huge, huge way. To all these people and many others who have helped get us to this point who I failed to mention, I want to say thank you. Now, now really is the hard part. Um, as Charlie said, the hardest part of any campaign that I've ever worked on has always been the, 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 the tail end of the campaign. Raising, Sean's going to give you some numbers in a minute where we stand and what we got to do, but the first part is the easy part, and we've gone through the easy part. Now is the time when we really, really need your help. Um, this is the hardest part of any campaign to get money in the door, and we need your help more than ever. So please be receptive. Please be as generous as you can. Um, and if you have uh, opportunities that you think we ought to pursue, we'd love to hear them. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Brett. Next is the reason we do what we do. The Oxley family from Albany, Georgia, has spent 60 nights and 17 trips to Augusta while becoming a part of the family and getting to know all the staff. Nikki is our poster child. On back, you'll see the poster with her uh, picture on it. Welcome to the Oxley family to the stage as they tell their story of the Augusta House. I might be a little bit nervous, but I should be used to this because I give Nikki's story about once every month. Um, good morning, everybody. It's such an honor to be here today. My mom's here, which is Nikki's grandmother, Linda Oxley. Um, her father, Chris Harper, is around here somewhere with her. But let me give you a little heads up on what Nikki went through. She was born on December 1st, 2009, at 26 weeks, weighing a mere 21 ounces. As you can guess, she was cared in our NICU at Phoebe Putney Memorial Hospital in Albany, Georgia. At two weeks old, she had a massive stroke affecting the left, left side of her brain. The doctors did not expect her to live. But as you can see, the little girl that was running through here, that was her, she pulled through it. During her four month stay at PB Putney, among other things, she suffered from acid reflux, which brought us to Augusta, Georgia. On March 29th, Phoebe Putney Memorial Hospital decided to transfer her to Augusta to the Children's Hospital of Georgia for a Nissen wrap and a G2 placement. She saw Dr. Pipkin. <laughs> we see, we've seen Dr. Howe and we've seen Dr. Hatley too. We were released from Augusta in May of 2010. We stayed at the Ronald McDonald House the entire six weeks in the NICU while we were in the NICU at the Children's Hospital of Georgia. When me and my mother first arrived, we were skeptical at first, but the family, the friends, and the staff at the Ronald McDonald House opened, was open arms and welcomed us in. I'm getting nervous, y'all. <laughs> we didn't expect, we didn't know what to expect. It was something new for us, but they made us very comfortable. They were always genu genu genuinely concerned about Nikki and always concerned about her well-doing. The room we stayed in, room nine, was decorated with vibrant colors and was clean. It made us feel even better and more comfortable to stay in. We came, we, when we come back to the Children's Hospital of Georgia, we always ask to stay in room nine. It holds many memories for us, as Christina will tell you. Of course, we stayed in it last night. After our nightly visits with Nikki at the NICU, there was always a home, a hot cooked meal, either a restaurant would de deliver or a family would cook for us. We always had some type of activities to play or some type of arts and crafts to do. We always interacted with the other families. I've made friends with the other families and we keep in contact on a regular basis. 
I finally remember that I finally remember the staff even baking me cupcakes for my birthday while we were up here for the six weeks. And it was so thoughtful and it also brought tears to my eyes. I am so happy that we have made wonderful friends and we will treasure y'all for the rest of our lives. If it wasn't for them, we would not have been able to see Nikki while she was in the hospital for the six weeks. The care that Nikki received was phenomenal and she is doing well. She continues to progress every day. To date, we still come back to the Children's Hospital of Georgia for checkups, and having the Ronald McDonald House on the Georgia Regents University campus will be a lot easier, especially for the plant families that do not have access to vehicles or any other types of transportation. If an emergency were to occur, they would be able to walk over to the hospital. It makes them feel more at home to be closer to their babies and families for whatever they are in the hospital for. I would like to thank the staff at the Ronald McDonald House for having us here to celebrate this wonderful occasion. We love every one of you and want to thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Christina. I've made a wonderful friend out of you. <laughs> so that's my lovely girl right there, Nikki. Yeah. Let's bring Nikki up on the stage. Thank you to the Oxley family one more time.